What's up dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? It is I, Rachel, your plant madam. My hair is falling, it's very heavy because I just got out of the shower. It feels like a five ton weight when it's in a bun on my head after I've showered, so. I probably have purple shampoo stuck in my ear as well. You're welcome. Before we get into today's video, I would like to say what's up to my notification squad. Little Roadie Aquascaper, Jerry, and Lauren Baker. Thank you guys for trying to make it to these videos quickly. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. So I asked you guys what you wanted to see on a community tab poll and you voted for a haul of all the things that I've gotten recently and haven't told you guys about. So I don't have a ton of stuff, but I wanted to just show you some of the things that I do have that I've picked up. Um, the first two are from Mountain Orchids. This one right here is Begonia Luz Hyensis. Begonia Luz Hyensis. These are some pretty immature leaves right here, just the green ones here, but you can see the more mature leaves, they come in. Let me back this light up a little bit. Maybe you can see what the hell's going on there. But you can see that the more mature leaves there in the center, they are like a really cool pattern. It's a very cool like tie-dye like pattern there. And I got it just a couple of days ago and I still haven't taken, it is such a curse whenever I'm filming. It's like, I can talk normal all day long. I push record, I can't talk. <clears throat> hate it. I got this um, this one and the other one a couple of days ago, but I haven't taken off the masking tape yet. I could feel that it was heavy when I got it, so I knew it didn't need any water. So I'm just being kind of lazy. I mean, he ships them with a stick, so this has just been sitting in a bubble waiting for me to tend to it. And then his brother that I also got from Mountain Orchids, and this one is really freaking wild, y'all. This one is called Begonia arachnoidea, arachnoidea, and these leaves are freaking crazy. Really, really, really cool. I mean, and then if you flip it around to the back side, I think it's pretty clear why it's called Begonia arachnoidea. It looks like a spider web here. Can you see it really good? Here on the back of the leaf. Really, really cool. So. I'm not sure if, I don't think the normal growth habit is to like be this far over. You can see a new little baby leaf coming in there. Really cute little fuzzy guy. Um, I don't really try to fuss with the, Winston, buddy, you're snoring. Hush, you need to get up. You're being so loud. Mom was trying to film a video. So I don't really fuss with these, you know, I don't try to like tie them up or anything. I just, I'm very careful to like leave the begonia be when I get it. I usually take off the wrapping and whatnot. This time I just didn't. It's only been about 24 hours or so. Y'all, it's really sparkly. It is such a shame with begonias because it's so hard to capture on camera what these things look like in person. It, there's actually an iridescence to the leaves. They're very shimmery. There's little red thorns all throughout this leaf, almost like the Milana Bellata, except for you can't really see them because they're just so fine looking. So they're absolutely gorgeous. So I was very happy to add that one. Okay, so that was it for Mountain Orchids. And then I had this beautiful Syngonium sent to me by Christy Bim. What is her name on Instagram? Her Instagram handle is Chris Christie, and she sent this little, she air layered this Syngonium here, and I've never really seen anything like it. I'm pretty sure she told me that she had a friend of hers, it was growing in their backyard, but this is absolutely gorgeous, and she air layered it, so when it came to me, it was already rooted up and completely ready to go, so that was really nice. It's actually been quite pest resistant also. I have a really hard time with spider mites and Syngonium Syngoniums just in general. So this one hasn't given me any problems, but it has been, you know, kind of like in a tote. So they can't really get in there, can they? Not unless you put them in there. Okay, so that was two begonias and the cute Syngonium. This next one is a Philodendron Chironier Julieth 
that I picked up from Equigenera. This is probably the last order that I made of the season. Um, I just been having a really hard time catching the restocks. I can't imagine why this website's so popular now. But yeah, I can't I can't really get in on the restocks anymore. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of reaching peak capacity as far as it goes with bigger philodendrons and monsteras and things like that, which I'm gonna show you some that I've cut down in my philodendron collection at the end of this video. I haven't been buying a whole lot, but I have been seeing a lot of the dirty plant hoes in the Facebook group nailing a lot of really nice stuff from Equigenera. I actually have the other version of the philodendron Chironier, if these are actually two different versions. I haven't put in the research. I have a very small one that's uh, much more vining than this, but I know things can change a lot in maturity. This is the newest leaf that it came out with right here, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I love my philodendron esmeraldense. It's one of my favorite plants in my collection. And when I saw this one, I just love the long leafed philodendron. Even though it's just regular green, no variegation, I'm absolutely in love with the shape. The shape is absolutely to die for. So that's what I picked up from Equigenera, and this was like a month ago, I think maybe longer. And I gave you guys like a little sneak peek of this one in my LED lighting video, if you watched that. This is the Half Moon Elbow that I ordered off of eBay. This is another plant that Casey was kind of looking out for was looking for for me and I didn't really know he was doing it. And when he found this, I was like, this is absolutely crazy. If you look down here at the very bottom, it's almost fully half moon, but you see it kind of veers off right here down towards the bottom. Either way, great start for the genetics of this plant in particular. On the eBay listing, they had the mother plant there and it showed um, having like two fully green leaves followed by two completely half moon leaves, followed by two green leaves, followed by two completely half moon leaves, which I find completely fascinating when you look at like one monstera and how it grows to another monstera and how it grows. They're, they seem all to be different, right? So there is something to be said if you have one type of variegation in your collection and you're looking for a different type of variegation. This one is considered like a block type variegation. The ones that I have are considered more of a marbled type variegation. So it's really, really cool and interesting to see like how different monsteras throw out their variegation. Pretty interesting. So I'll show you the rooting that I've been doing. This guy is way, way, way past needing to be potted up. I've just been babying it. It's been in a tote and I've just been, I don't know, terrified to do anything thing with it, I guess. You can see it's got a little growth nipple. So here is all of the roots that I've been growing on this guy and he's been water propagating inside of a tote just mostly because I didn't want the white to crisp up on the guy and all that. The growth point, I don't know if you can see it, but it is right there. There's a little nipple and the nipple fortunately is right on the line of the white and the green. So you couldn't ask for a better growth point. I don't know if I said this earlier, but it was really competitively priced at the end of the auction. Like I didn't pay any, at the end of the auction, I didn't pay any more for this node of an elbow than what I would have paid for any other node of an elbow. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everybody was asleep. Everybody on eBay was asleep all at the same time when I got that node. Thank God y'all was all asleep. That covers most of it. And then I want to show you, cause that's like, cause I didn't get, I haven't been ordering a ton of plants. I think I've been mostly focusing on propagating and doing things like that. But these are definitely some big ones that I want to show you that I have propagated. That wasn't very many plants. Usually when I get a box of something, I open it with you guys because you know, market research and stuff. So y'all hear me talking all the time about my melanocrysum varicose blah, 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 blah. my melanocrysum varicosum cross, which is also known as a splendid. And I cut it down all the way to the top of the bamboo pole that I had in the pot. So I wanted to show you guys, which Casey has intentions of putting this in the aquaponics system, but he hasn't done it yet. So it's just been trying to root. We've just kind of had it sitting in the, uh, on the edge of the aquarium, kind of just dangling in some LECA. But here is, completely blocking out the light. 
So here is the top cutting from the Splendid that I had growing in my living room under LED light. I don't know if you guys, cause every time like I try to show the camera how big it is, I'll put it, I'll put it as far back as I can. It's a super duper big, big leaf. This is my most prized thing that I've ever grown in my collection. I'm very, very proud of it. Um, I talk about it all the time. It's super pest resistant. It's just been an amazing plant to grow. It gives me a lot of confidence in the growing department because it doesn't slow me down with a bunch of harassment. So if I flip it around right here, and I don't know if this uh, leaf is going to fail out on me necessarily. It does seem to be very tight. These leaves typically don't have a lot of trouble uh, releasing once they kind of come out to this point. I may just be being a nervous Nelly about that. This leaf may actually get compromised because I cut it. And you can see there's some extension of the previously there aerial roots, the little spike collar that goes around each node. And you can see just how big the collars have actually gotten on this plant. Very, very large aerial roots sticking out there. So this is going to be going into our aquaponic system. You can see right here, it almost looks like a calcification going on right there. It almost looks like a salt buildup or like a crystal type of buildup. And this is completely normal in rooting philodendron. So sometimes people will send me pictures of this type of stuff right here and they'll be like, what's going on? Oh my God, this is a good sign. This actually means that you've got roots coming. There's actually a little growth point right here, which I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. It's kind of like first time you, first time me, Danielle song. But I don't know if you can see, but right here, there is some leaf browning. There's like a, a little streak of brown right there. So that's what makes me think we may not keep uh, the new leaf that's trying to come in there, but we shall see. So that is the top cutting of the Splendid. This is one of the first plants that I bought. That's why it's so big because I've had this plant for shit, I don't know, a year. You can go back and watch the video of me unboxing this plant. It's not been a super duper long time because it's been filmed the video era, but you know what I'm saying. This one actually has a growth point on it already. I'm peeling off some of like the soggy, the sheath, little bits of the sheath that were still left on. Here is uh, another node down. This one actually has some like crystals built up on the back of the leaf. You can actually get these little crystals that the melon on a Christ and varicosum puts off. They feel a lot like a sugary crystal, like a little sugary residue. They're not harmful to the plant. I've seen tons of these things on the backs of the leaves. It's never once showed any leaf damage because of it. Then we have another one. All of the stem, all of the stems are gonna look funky because it was growing in a weird way. But here is a, another leaf from that plant. I'm telling you guys, I chopped it all the way down. I talked and talked and talked and I finally did it. Not a lot of crystals on the back of this one. What's really cool about these, about this splendid in particular, is the fact that on this side of the stem, it's like a, a darker maroon type of green color right here. And then if you flip it over, it's a brighter color of a green. So not only is it gorgeous, but it's got an ombre effect on the stem, which is really neat. I feel like I do really well with certain kinds of plants, but that by no means makes me an expert. I'm not a botanist. I've never gone to college for anything like this before. It's just something that I find interesting. So Casey asked me questions a lot and I seldom know the answer. He'll ask me, will the leaves on these propagations right here come out much bigger than what a small propagation would be. And I said, yes, I think that the leaves are going to be bigger, but I don't know how much bigger they're gonna be. I don't know what the deciding factor is. Like, I don't know what decides leaf size. I don't know what would make it have a big, leaf versus a smaller leaf, but it's very interesting. So I will definitely keep you guys updated on those propagations because the leaves are so big. I'm hyper interested to see when it does push out its first leaf, is the leaf gonna be like comparable to the propagation that I took or is it gonna go way back in time? Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think is gonna happen. Science time. Give me your hypotheses. You know what I'm saying? Here's some more stuff. I got some more stuff. Hang on just a sec. It's already freaking dark. I hate fallback. Oh my gosh. The big Worcestershire sauce stump that, oh, that Darren sent me from Steve's Lou's. Mm. Okay, so I've got a couple more that I can show you. So this one, I lied when I said I only got that from Equigenera because I got this also from Equigenera. This is a philodendron 
Mammy Eye. And I have been wanting one of these. Y'all, I made a wish list like last year and I had this Mammy Eye on it and I just now got it this year. If you were having to make a choice between a Philodendron Plowmanii Eye and a Philodendron Mammy Eye, I would pick the Mammy Eye. I think that the Mammy Eye is prettier. The Plowmanii Eye, the pillowiness of the leaves actually, I think takes away from the the variegation that you can actually see on the leaves. And with the Mammy Eye, it presents more flat so that you can actually see the beautiful variegation on it. And also with the Mammy Eye, you get the plum backing, very, very faint lining of the leaves, almost like how the Gloriosum has the pink you know, the pink outline on the leaves. I've really, really enjoyed this one in particular. I love the cloudy type variegation, like the silver cloud type variegation. And it's been growing really fast, super fast for an import plant. So you can't ask for more than that, right? Now I will give you a stump date on the giant philodendron warsawexii stump that I got from Darren at Steve's Leaves. I've had it propagating in like a Kool-Aid pitcher because it won't fit in. I could have put it in a five gallon bucket, but I just didn't. Okay, so here are my, here's my thoughts. Here's my thoughts. Every time I put it in the water, the water gets like extra, extra disgustingly stinky, like really fast. And I don't know what in the hell is in this stump that makes that happen, but damn, like it stinks. I've had it in the water, geez, I don't know, since, since whenever you guys saw me unbox it, whenever you guys saw me unbox it a week before that because I film ahead of time. But here you can see the growth points coming in. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one right here on this backside. I can't drop this or I'm gonna kill Winston with it. There's one right there. Can you see him? So, and here's one right here. Uh, there's growth points all over it. Now, same question. So when the leaves come in on this guy, the stump, are they gonna be like these big, giant, massive leaves or are they gonna be like teeny, 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 tiny leaves on this big, giant stump? If you know what it's gonna be, then tell me why it's gonna be like that because I don't have time to look it up. So that is the stump date for the Philodendron Warsawexii or Worcestershire sauce, however you wanna say it. This is like a one that like just kind of rotted off or whatever. I need to cut that one off. These have like poked out further since I got it. So back into your stinky fish water you go there, buddy. If you like today's video, be sure and hit the thumbs up because it helps me out and it's free. You like free stuff, don't you? With your cheap ass. And if you wanna become a part of our Dirty Plant Ho family, then be sure and subscribe. I've told you just about everything that I know. I've showed you most of all the plants that I can remember that I got uh, and I haven't showed you. If I can think of any more, I'll throw up this video idea again. If you guys have any ideas for any future videos, leave them down in the comment section below. I love you guys. Peace out. Later taters. Bye. And now I would like to give a big huge shout out and thank you to all of my dirty plant enthusiasts, my monthly supporters, Abby Gilbert, Ace Cadet, Alexandra Chilton, Alexis Solly, Always Propagating, Amber Christian, Amber V, Amy Adwan, Amy Powell, Amy Sutton, Andrea Bruce, Anna Dreesen, April Steer, Ashley Caraveo, Barbara Lindbergh, Beauty Isn't Perfect, Bryn, Carl Jr., Carly Grinnell, Casey Dillon, Kath with Plants, Chamomile Camille, Charlotta R., Chris Felice, Chrissy Spencer, Colleen Coyle Levy, Colleen Hatton, Courtney Martin, Crazy Plant Lady, Cuties with Cardi, Danielle, Danielle Holt, Darren Heppel, Daryl Lee, Diana Anderson, Eliza Haney, Elizabeth Gracieful, Ellen Louise Pasco, Emma Castle, Evie, Felicia Yeager, Fenner Lamb, Goncalo Martins, Gretchen Ward, Haley Hetrick, Haley Martin, Haley Kester, Heather Summers, Heidi Christofferson, Hells Bells, Holy Coley, House Planty Goodness, Isabella H., Jamie Ellis, Jake Rowe, Jana Vieira, Jaya Rowe, Jedi KCC, Jenna Maria, Jennifer Banner, Jessica Viola, Jessica D, 
Joe Howard, John Alexander, Joseph L. Simmons V, Caitlin Card, Cassandra Hines, Caitlin Harvey, Kathy Walters, Kathy W, Kaylee Logan, Kelly Hodgson, Kim Toby, Kimberly Mossman, Not Dude, Christy Bim, Crystal Wang, Kaya Hauser, Lauren Loves Leaves, Lauren Loves Plants, Lisa Garden, Light Owl, Lily Ann Morin, Lily Rose, Lynn Therese, Liz B, Loves Leaves, Lulu's Leaves, Mara Baker, Mary Marr, Megan Moyna, Medusa's Mess, Meeks, Megan Lily, Mev Ham, MF Webb, Michael Hart, Michelle Reed, Michelle Waters, Monica Allison, Morgan Cluck, Mortessa, My Clean Leaves, Nadine Guzman, Natural State Ashley, Nesta Humphreys, Nicholas Constant, Nikki Toller, Peanuts Plants, Rachel Sharp, Raylene Hillhouse, Ricky Mulbeck, Reese's Roots, Safia Bahadir, Samantha Deparity, Sarah, Seth Miller, Sophia Rogers, Sophie Bodding, Steph W, Tanya Houtsaker, Teresa Lady T. Oakley, Tiffany Wright, Tug Batoss, Turquoise Fibers and Foliage, Tyler Kersey, Vernie Zoo, Victoria Fonseca, and Wesley Lamentino. And now I would like to give a big, dirty, dirty, nasty shout out to all of my dirty little plant hoes out there. Seven Puckies, Cindy C, Alana Treese, Allie Wells, Allison Havens, Amber Mae Fleming, Amber Beth, Amy Walton, Amy Baxter, Amy Hatch, Andrew Wolf, Andrea Hewitt, Anna D, April Robinson, Arlisa B, Ashley Noland, Ashley Williams, Aubrey Puff, Autumn, Becca Panyard, C. Woe, Caitlin Phillips, Celia Stuff and Things, Chelsea Clifton, Cheyenne Burnett, Christy Stewart, Danny Spray, Deanne Yu Santos, Daryl and Music, Denise Tomer, Diana Warner, Donna Ratcliffe, Elizabeth Co, Emily Cephalu, Emily Forhey, Emma Wiley, Gab, Gina the Great, Gingerly Life, Haley Eblen, Heather Lamb, Honeybird, Houseplant Heather, Houseplants and Hip Hop, Jen DeReha, Jennifer Rouse, Jenny Vanderbilt, Jessica F, Jessica Stanford, Jill C, Jordan Delaney, Juan ZC, Justin Hartley, Casey Wardell, Caitlin Guavi, Chris, uh, Carla Diaz, Catherine Sproles, Katie, Katrin, Kelly Rice, Kiri Kelly, Christy D, Lauren SJI, Lara Juno, Lindsay Daniel, Maggie Quarter, Margot F, Mary Boots, Mark Straw, Megan Earls, Megan Gowdy, Melissa Hartog, Mel's Planty Plants, Michaela Rags, Michelle G, Nicholas Caruso, Nicole McCaw, Nikki Grilly, Odd Avocado Tree, Olivia Y, Oops I Sold My Planties, Paul Zhang, Pete B, Phoebe DeBover, Plant Princess, Plantastica, Simonetta, QR, Reagan Cornelius, Real Estate Tulsa, Rhiannon C, Rhiannon Chuckasang, Rico 9383, Riley Elizabeth, Robin Root and Leaf, Sammy Joe Ruby, Sarah G, Sarah J, Sarah Jones, Sasha Arujo, Spotted Oreo 10, Stacey Anderson, Tanya Von Black, Tara Peterson, Tara's Plants, Tropics in the Midwest, The Fiber Circus, The Hatter's Madness, The Plants Meow, The Turtle, Tracy Buzzle, Tyler Frakes, Valerie, Victoria Feltenberger, Whitney Eaton, Whitney McHugh, Wicked Witch, Roxy, Will H, Winter Rose, and Zachary Young. Thank you all so, so much for your support. I hope that you're enjoying the Facebook group. We have a live coming later this month and your membership video is in the tubes and I will be working on it this evening. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. Mm, bye. I don't the police. I'm a free man. I don't care what they would say because I am free from these prison gates. I said, break these.